This is Dabu7. Talked about big earthquake scenarios many times. And of course, anyone that lives in a zone that is prone to see earthquakes, you need to have a plan. We've talked about some of the big drills in the past, like Cascadia Rising in California. The big drills they've had in the Pacific Northwest. Specifically, targeting a big earthquake in an incoming tsunami. Seattle, San Francisco, all those coastline cities could be affected. Now, this is real deal. And the timing of this, as I was starting to record this video, off the coast of California, hits a pretty decent quake. So I went ahead and kicked out that video, but it shows that uh, when these areas go quiet, like the Juan de Fuca plate running out here off the coast, depending on how long they sit there building up energy, well, that really is everything that's being released in the earthquake. When you have these plates locking up, grinding, some of them subduction, other strike-slip faults, they're catching all that pressure builds for so long, and they finally go. And that's when we see the big quakes. Now, it's not just the West Coast. We also have to deal with the possibilities of big quakes hitting in the Midwest. Now, the thing about the big quakes hitting in this country, there's two big hot spots in terms of seeing something very tragic happening. That is on the western coast of the United States in the New Madrid region. This area has become more and more and more active with a mid-three range striking right here in southern Illinois just the other day. We've had them in Kentucky, Ohio, Tennessee, Arkansas, Missouri, all around the keyhole of the New Madrid Fault, this whole region. And when they talk about this thing unzipping, they say that it will affect the areas from all the way up here near Cairo, and it's interesting, the connections, some of these cities they mentioned, to ancient Egypt, and could run all the way down to Memphis. So this region, long overdue, and when it hits, it could, it's in my opinion, it's going to be a big one. Now, I would like to see smaller quakes to relieve this, believe it or not. Nothing that's going to lead to a catastrophic quake, but sometimes if we can have a relief of the pressure, it will help uh, fend off the big one. If we could have a couple fours, fives, good jolts, maybe shook everybody up, had them like, oh, this thing may be wakening up, and then that's it, then I'm fine with that. But if we see nothing, and then along comes a seven-pointer, even a six, seven, six point seven plus in this region, you're going to feel it across the whole Midwest. And it's going to cause a lot of devastation. But it's something that I think people take for granted in these regions because they've never experienced a quake. They don't go through the quakes like they do in California. The constant swarms or a little rumble here and there. So they don't have a plan. So as I always say, have a plan. And in terms of the cities, you can see Hawaii here. This would really affect all of Hawaii with the quakes popping up literally all over the, the island and around volcanoes and everything else. But when it comes to Alaska, you're talking about just this southern rim, the park connected to the Ring of Fire in all of its activity. Another update here. And so far, it's got these quakes sticking. It's got three of them listed. All USGS, very shallow, same region. But what happens when a tsunami wave comes in from one of these? It's real deal. You have to think about how you're going to survive such a thing. You know, high ground is key. To me, being able to be in an area where you can get up to higher elevation, and I'm not just talking up into a building, but I'm talking up into hills, that's going to be key. Now, for some people, that's going to be out of the question, and I know others have said that they'll just grab a lawn chair and, and take it face on. I mean, that's their choice. 
but I want to see as many people survive this or an event like this as possible. And the key places here, obviously, at this point, in the United States, talked about Alaska, Hawaii, but literally the whole West Coast. From Seattle, all the way down the main route, and you could even say Vancouver up there in Vancouver Island. You got Seattle up here that would be affected. Olympia, Aberdeen, Seaside, Lincoln City, Newport, Florence, Reedsport, Coos Bay, Eureka, Fortuna, and these are the areas closest to the most recent activity here. They would see the tsunami waves first. This is right outside of Mount Shasta. And then we have Mendocino, Santa Rosa, into San Francisco, and literally every city along the coastline uh, al along this area. And it's not only the coastline you have to worry about here. It's anything along the San Andreas that starts to cut through California as well. And when we talk about the San Andreas, it coming unzipped, I've talked about this before, it will magnify as it goes through this whole area of Bakersfield, California City, and affect Los Angeles, one of the key areas to watch is the Salton Sea right here, the swarms around it, because the fault dead ends here and then picks up right here. And when we start to see big movement here, we start to see correlating activity in other areas. Another area that's been real quiet for a long time is Baja. There's been times in the past where we've seen big quakes strike right in the middle of this region. And if you have something hit like that, a big quake, an eight-pointer hit in here, it could send tsunamis both ways uh, in tight quarters. But big quake hit in Mexico recently. Now we've got decent quakes hitting here. It's only a matter of time before the New Madrid does pop. Or we see the big Cali quake, West Coast quake, happen. I just want to see people have a plan and just know that these are the hot spots. If you're in them, have a plan, a survival plan, especially if you're on the coastline. I can't stress it enough. There's nothing, to me, scarier than uh, a tsunami wave when on the beach or near the coast whatsoever. It's, um, no one can stop it. Your military has not a weapon to stop it. Only thing that's going to save you is higher ground. So, Things to think about, at least to get a plan together, a route, uh, to get somewhere if need be, if you're in one of these areas. And it's not that one needs to live in fear. If you live in an area like this, enjoy life, but just have a plan. And uh, you can sleep better at night in doing so. But with bigger quakes popping up here recently, something to think about. I'll leave links here so you guys can read into this a little bit more but uh, the timing of me doing this video and then this big one hitting off the coast there hmm. let's watch the signs guys it's been Dabu 7 with an earthquake update